Hey everybody, Maria Marquis from Coda here. And in this video series, we're exploring different patterns that you'll find you use over and over again, dock after dock after dock. And what we're doing is we're exploring how to take a one concept and then remix and reuse it in different ways to serve us over and over again. So in this video, we're going to talk about converting to tables. So as you start adding tables to Coda Docs, inevitably, you'll notice that you probably need to add more columns, more information, the data set starts to grow. So here, for example, I've got a little task table. You can imagine that I would press enter and add more tasks, more tasks. This is gonna be assigned to me for sure. I'm gonna say, all right, Maria Marquis, that's for you. This is of course in progress. I'm working very hard on it and we can add a date. Now we could keep adding row after row after row, but oftentimes we need to add more descriptions for tasks as well. So for example, you could imagine that as we start to have a bunch of team tasks, there might be different sub projects that they're part of, and I might want those to be part of this table. So I could go over here, click on the plus sign to add a column like I've done already. And I'm gonna change this to be a select list. And we're gonna make it a new one. And then I could say what I want the select list items to be. So maybe the localization project, maybe the uh, speedy project, and maybe uh, the delightful project, whatever you want. You could add them all in there. And then also as you're starting to add them in here, maybe you have a new project. You could just add it and click plus. So let's just add a few things here. Do, do, do. But then if you think about this, now that we've got the projects listed here, you might realize, oh wow, there's actually more information about those projects that I also want to track. Maybe like the project owner or the scope or the budget or a description or a link to relevant content. Now we don't wanna have that all be still in this table that would clutter up our tasks. Here's where the pattern comes in. It's called convert to table. So how it works is I just go up here to that little uh, option menu I go to select list options where I could add more things, but notice there's this handy little convert to table option. I'm gonna click on that. And then I decide, do I want this to go in a separate page or just below the current table? For the sake of example, I'm gonna choose below. So now I click on that create, I've got this little project table down here and I can add columns like the project owner. And we could make that a, a people column. So we've got a really great drop down of all the different people that are part of our organization, just like so. All right, this is gonna be for Maria. We're gonna give this one to Joe. We're gonna give this one to Laura. And uh, I'll take this one too, why not? Maria, there we go. We could then keep adding more and more columns to describe the project. So like the description, the due date. You know, your, your sky is the limit here. Now, why this is valuable is now, notice how this looks a little bit different. It's got that little outline. It tells you there's more to see. So if I hover over new project, notice it shows me all of the great information that we added into the project table down here. Same thing with delightful and uh, also speedy. That all follows it through. What's happened here is we converted this column from a select list to a fancy thing called a lookup column. It essentially means we're looking at another table and pulling all the other information along for the ride. What this allows you to do is it allows your data here to grow while still keeping it clean and allowing you to track and manage all of those different areas. So you'll know that you want to convert to table when you have something that you want to describe even more. That's supporting what you're working on. So now that we know this pattern, convert to table, let's go ahead, open up our side view and take a look at a few different examples of where this could be helpful. Let's start with a personal example. So here you could imagine that I'm trying to stay fit, trying to stay healthy, getting very, very sweaty. And maybe what I wanna do is I wanna create a little workout plan with a lot of different information. So what I could do is just convert this from a text to a select list. We'll make it a new one. And I could go ahead and convert to table right away or just add them in. Maybe I wanna do crunches and I wanna do jumping jacks. And maybe I want to lie on the ground. You have a very rigorous workout schedule. And I can go ahead, convert to table. I'm gonna put it below or again, you could do it in another page. And now what I can do is I could add maybe YouTube videos of these different exercises that I really like. So we could say, all right, let's go ahead and go to the packs, let's take a look for more. 
and we're going to go ahead and search up here for YouTube. There it is. We're just going to go ahead and install that pack here for us. And then let's go ahead and get rid of that. I could go ahead and paste in the YouTube videos of those different exercises that I want to be watching. And of course, we're going to make this uh, instead of a text, we're going to make this a YouTube. So it's going to pull in all that information for me here. So now we see uh, the Ab Blast Level 1 from fabulous code maker Cassie Ho. So now if we come up here, we add our crunches, our jumping jacks, our laying on the ground, we can do the same thing where we hover over it, we see the video, I could then just open this up and watch it right here inside of my Coda doc, and then I can mark when I've done it. You could even make this, uh, instead of having it be just one thing, you could do a little bit of a blend. So we wanna allow multiple selections, great, I'm gonna do crunches, and then I'm gonna lie on the ground. And again, you pull in all of the information from that other table. So you can imagine putting together a whole exercise database table, putting all the different exercises you think are cool, the different YouTube videos you found, and then just go ahead and create a couple different plans up here at the top. All right, now let's take a look at how this can help us if we are freelancers. So for a freelancer, maybe we're pitching ourselves to a bunch of podcasts or different um, radio shows or different publications, and we wanna keep track of our pitches. So here we go, we've got the day that we reached out, the outlet, whoever our contact is, and then um, the topic that we pitched. But maybe what we also want is to be able to see kind of the email that we used to pitch them so we're not repeating ourselves if we wanna reach out again. So you guessed it, we're gonna come up here to that select list, we're gonna choose convert to table, go ahead and create it, and then now we could just go and say let's add a column, we're just gonna make this text, and this could be the email copy, and you could go ahead and paste it right in here. And then if you hovered over it, you would be able to see the email copy that you used. Great way to build in that template for you. You could then even add you know, keywords or a headline, whatever other information about that topic and that pitch that you want to include alongside your CRM light up here at the top. All right, now let's become product manager. So product manager, psych, it's really the same thing that we saw up here at the top. What I see all the time is needing to manage those different projects that are happening in parallel. So this idea of having that project in its own table and having the leads and all the information, you could then come in here and do calculations as well. You know, how many of these tasks are currently on hold? So you could include different columns down here to say, all right, Let's do tasks delayed. We could say equals. And what we want to do is we want to look at the task. What do we call this table? Oh, we just called it task. Beautiful. So let's edit that formula. So look at that tasks table. Then I want to filter where the project is equal to this row. And the status is equal to on hold, and then I want to count. So in this case, luckily, the localization project has none on hold, but notice down here, we see the delightful project does, and if we were to make any changes up here at the top to things being on hold, notice it calculates. And then again, we could hover over this up here and see, oh, there's a task delayed. The idea being that as your project tracker grows, if you're a PM, you probably are gonna have a bunch of different pages where you're tracking different elements. You've got write-ups, you've got notes, you've got briefs. So you can imagine this project base table being in a separate area, but you still wanna be able to learn from both places. All right, so now let's think about what if we are a small business? Maybe I'm a small business and one of the things I do is I sell tools. And I've got my little inventory. It shows me all of the tools that we have, how many are in our inventory, the price, and also the vendor that I use to restock. So if I know, oh, it's time to order more hammers because we only have five, I know it's time for me to call up Felipe at Felipe's Fine Tools. So here I might wanna have kind of the phone number, the point of contact, maybe a link to their website. I don't wanna include all that in this table. So that's where I'm gonna do the convert to table. So we're gonna go up to our select list options, choose convert to table, we're gonna pop it below. And then now we could go ahead and just add the phone number and the email and a link to their website. All of the relevant information about this particular company. And then if I hovered over it, I would see kind of a business card, if you will. Okay, last example, what if we are a consulting firm? 
So what we would do here is we probably have a list of all of the companies that we're working with, right? We've got Chris A, who's working at Blocks. This person's a manager. But if we think about this, I probably also have like general company information that I want to know. If I'm going to be talking to Chris, I probably want to have a little bit of a record of what's Blocks all about. What is their description? So that's where I'm going to go ahead because now that I have something that I need more descriptions for, I'm going to go ahead and choose my select list options, choose convert to table and pop it in. Of course, I could always put this on a different page, but now I could go, you know, date founded. I could do a description. I could do a website right here and just put in all of that information. And then when I was looking at my CRM, I could see all the details about blocks. So this pattern convert to table, it's all about when you're starting to work on your table and as it grows, if you have different attributes in those columns that you want to describe further, that's when you choose convert to table because then you'll have it be connected. Just like we see here with localization, you're not going to have two separate tables where you have to go and flip and flop between you're able to unite them together based on the content. All right, give it a try. See where you can convert to table in your own docs and I'll see you next time.